this morning is about the, uh, the, the cyber security profession, <coughs> careers, how the profession is developing. It is a very brief overview. I could talk for hours about it, but Steve won't allow me to. Um, the talk is mainly based on the work which was done by the uh, ISP and, and IAC, the Institute of Information Security Professionals, and the uh, Information Assurance Advisory Council on professionalism. Uh, but I'm also going to mention uh, a, recent, a more recent development, which is the, uh, the Cyber Digital Career Pathways Project, which is uh, run out of the Home Office and is being uh, project managed by the College of Policing. Uh, and the aim of that is to evolve a cyber digital investigation profession within UK law enforcement. Just a few things about the organisations that I've mentioned. Um, IAC, the uh, Information Assurance Advisory Council, um, it is an independent, not-for-profit body. It is, uh, it is funded by its corporate sponsors, the likes of BT, Fortinet, etc. And what it does is it organizes workshops where it brings together um, recognized cybersecurity uh, practitioners to discuss and to make recommendations about issues uh, affecting cybersecurity, uh, particularly in the UK. Um, last year, they uh, ran a series of workshops on, on the profession. They also ran a series of workshops about uh, diversity, but specifically in diversity, attracting people to the industry, to the profession, who have got some sort of disability. And they focused on autism. And it was really a, um, a, a very stimulating set of workshops, that one. Uh, this year, they've moved on to uh, uh, trusted, secure software development. And, uh, and how we can make uh, uh, software, the software that we use, more trusted and more secure. Um, so that's work in process this year. <coughs> the ISP, close to my heart, uh, like, uh, like Steve, I'm a fellow of the ISP, set up in 2006 really to provide um, a focus for what was then known as information security, what's now known as cyber security, uh, primarily in the UK, really to advance information security as a profession uh, and uh, to be an accreditation authority for the industry. And uh, uh, moving on 11 years, uh, we have this year applied to the Privy Council for chartered status. So uh, we are hoping when we get, well, we're hoping to get charter status and if and when we do, uh, we will be able to um, uh, certify chartered professionals in the cyber security space. <coughs> and the Cyber Digital Careers Pathway Project was really set up because um, uh, law enforcement agency were having problems in the courts where um, uh, uh, you know, the defense briefs were actually challenging the professional qualifications of the, uh, uh, of the individuals who were giving evidence. And so uh, the Home Office has decided that what it wants to do is to set up a profession for cyber digital investigators in law enforcement um, to alleviate that problem. And what uh, the ISP is working very closely with the College of Policing on this. In fact, I was at a workshop last week where we, uh, uh, we were assessing the first batch of 36 candidates for membership of the um, Embryonic Institute of Cyber Digital Investigation Professionals. Uh, and don't, it's a bit of a mouthful, don't blame me, I didn't invent it. It was, uh, it was a name that was, uh, was set by the project. So, um, uh, you may think, oh, you know, cyber digital investigation, it's just, you know, cyber security in another form. But actually it isn't. The, uh, uh, the range of skills 
and the granularity of the skills involved in cyber digital investigation work is different from uh, the uh, the normal range of skills we come across in uh, in cyber security so uh, talking about profession definition of a profession from the uh, Oxford English Dictionary but by and large you're talking about someone who uh, has had prolonged training and a formal qualification to, uh, to conduct a specific paid role, a paid occupation. And it der derives from um, the notion of an occupation that one professes to be skilled in. And that's not a new concept. Um, uh, a book was published in 1772 written by Mary Smith, um, an unmemorable name, but it was entitled The Complete Housekeeper and Professed Cook, which she was actually saying at that time, cookery was a profession, and who am I to argue with that? So where are we with um, cyber security as a profession? The, uh, the, the UK cyber security strategy has stated that uh, cyber security is now in a position where it requires a governing body dedicated to cyber security. There's, uh, there's a lot of public debate and it has only been uh, exacerbated by recent events. Um, we're thinking of um, uh, the NHS WannaCry attack uh, uh, the British Airways debacle and the, uh, the more recent uh, uh, Equifax, Equifax breach. Um, something I believe in passionately. The National, Com uh, National Cyber Security Centre um, and lots of other organisations in this field keep on promoting cyber security as almost an exclusively technical discipline but it isn't um, uh, we need to think about ethical beha behaviors we need to think about human interactions and we need to think of disciplines within the field of cyber security which are not entirely technically based We need to ensure adequate protection uh, from the citizen to corporates. If you read the media, there's a lot in the media about um, uh, incidents which have, uh, which have a large impact, which affect corporates. Um, but we need to, to remember that there are millions of uh, individuals, of citizens out there, um, ordinary users, and we need to bring them into the cybersecurity field because they are part of our defense. And finally, we talked like here last year about a skill shortage. Is there a skill shortage? You bet there is. You talk to a pen testing company. The uh, uh, good experienced penetration testers can command salaries of close on six figures. And the, uh, uh, the transfer market is brutal and vicious in that area because there are so few of them. You talk to major corporates who are looking for a new chief information security officer. They have real trouble identifying CISOs, let alone recruiting them. So yes, there is a skill shortage. Uh, but there's also a skill sh shortage because there are people in other disciplines, and I will say especially IT and um, engineering, who actually need to recognize that as well as being uh, uh, professional IT people and professional engineers, they need to be pro uh, cybersecurity professionals as well if they're going to do their jobs properly. Historically, we haven't really had a cybersecurity professional uh, profession. 
What we have had is a load of people, me included, who have drifted in to cyber security from other professions. For me, it was IT. Um, a friend of mine, Dr. Bob Knoll, who chairs Cyber Security Challenge, um, came to it from a, a certified engineering background. We've sort of drifted in to it. Now, that, um, that needs to be maintained because, as I've said, we need people in those, in those professions to recognize that they need to also to be cybersecurity professionals. But we need to build from the bottom. We need to build cybersecurity professionals from scratch. And we're starting to do that. The NCSC has approved uh, a number of uh, cybersecurity degree programs at bachelor and at master's level, and, and Steve Fernell has been actively involved in that work. Uh, the IASP, CREST, and other organizations have been working with the Tech Partnership to develop um, a cybersecurity apprenticeships and degree apprenticeships. So we are starting to, uh, to recognize that cybersecurity is a profession and people can come up from the bottom and build up as dedicated cybersecurity professionals. What do we mean by cybersecurity pro professionals? Back in the day when I was um, uh, a programming team leader, uh, I went to HR department and I said, I need a new junior programmer. So uh, they recruited one for me and um, uh, he came along and his background was computer operations. He'd never done programming in his life. But the HR department said, oh, we just want a computer person. We're having the same sort of thing in the cybersecurity profession. You, uh, you really don't want to employ a pen tester as a security architect or a security architect as a, as, as a cybersecurity auditor. We need, and uh, uh, the, um, the, the Cyber Digital Investigator program has recognized this shortfall and what they have built into their, um, their definition of their institute for professionalism is a series of job families so that people actually qualify into a job family uh, as well as being uh, certified as a, uh, as a professional. So um, the, uh, if any of you are in law enforcement, the, uh, uh, the five job families are analyst, forensics, intelligence, interviewer, and investigator. But they're considering, as of l last week, adding a sixth, and that is prosecution because they need to bring people uh, in organizations which deal with prosecuting offenders into recognizing what are the principles of cyber digital investigation and what are the shortcomings and the, uh, uh, and the potholes. Not just the, um, the Crown Prosecution Service, but an organization I'd never heard of till last week, the, uh, the Revenue and Customs Prosecution Office. So. Uh, The, uh, it is traditional in the world of professionalism to use a, a, the, the tree analogy. That um, uh, in medicine, for example, you start at the bottom, you, um, you gain basic medical knowledge and skill, and then you move up. And uh, as, a, uh, as a nurse, you might go into theater work, you might go into midwifery. As a doctor, you might become a GP you might uh, branch off into some sort of specialism. We really can't live with that model in terms of cybersecurity, because as I've said, we need to bring in people from other professions to, uh, uh, into, into the cybersecurity profession, and we need to make sure that they are trained and qualified properly, uh, even th as well as being trained and qualified properly in their chosen profession. So. Uh, we need to embrace the, this concept, and this, is, this was key to the IAC work, this concept of a profession of professions.
so I've, uh, I've run through this very quickly, more quickly than I intended to. So uh, if I can conclude by uh, saying, we need to recognize that cybersecurity is a profession of professions. We, um, we need to develop a way not just of growing cybersecurity professionals from scratch, but integrating people from other professions. There needs to be a professional body for cybersecurity. We like to think it's going to be the ISP, uh, but that's, that's a decision the Privy Council is going to take. But whoever is the governing body for cybersecurity has got to work with all the other players in the field. They, uh, they have to work with uh, organizations like um, the BCS, who is a co-sponsor here, uh, IET, with CREST, with ISARCA, and with uh, several other bodies who are active uh, in, in this field. Because although there, there can only be one lead governance body, um, if we're going to have a true profession of professions, then we need to uh, consult widely. I'll say a bit about um, the principles um, set by Lord Benson in 1992 uh, later on. So recognize that we're missing, one of the things that we're missing in cybersecurity is uh, a recognized and authoritative common body of knowledge. Now there are two initiatives in this area. Um, uh, the, well, uh, the ISP, CREST, etc., etc., are working with NCSC on a common body of knowledge for cyber security. They've got a project which they set up last year, uh, which is led by, which is being delivered by an academic consortium led by uh, University of Lancaster. Um, and uh, but. What they're seeking to produce is the definitive common body of knowledge from the basics right up to the experts, expert knowledge and discipline. Uh, and understandably, that's going to take time. It is probably going to be 2019, 2020 before that project reaches fruition. And then there's the fourth bridge job of, uh, of maintaining that common body of knowledge. What the ISP and its corporate members felt was uh, that was a good initiative, it was worth supporting, but we needed something quicker. So we produced a knowledge framework which operates at a fairly basic level across the whole cybersecurity spectrum and provides definition of terms and an, an explanation, explanation of principles at a basic level. Again, because what we find is uh, two things. One is our corporate members want that because they want to educate broadly their, their, all their staff who are involved in cybersecurity. Um, and um, so, uh, and secondly, it, it, uh, it is something which can be del delivered quickly and forms a basis for the NCSC work to take forward and build a proper uh, common body of knowledge covering all the levels of knowledge and understanding. IAC, and, and I've mentioned this before, the, the, the IAC um, workshops concluded that the continuing technical focus um, of cybersecurity belies the full breadth of uh, roles and competencies involved. And, uh, and also, it inhibits diversity. Um, there was a, uh, a report published earlier this year entitled, Women in Cybersecurity. And that indicated that over 50% of the women working in cybersecurity who were surveyed did not have a technical background, did not have a background in IT or, uh, uh, or engineering. Their background was audit, law, psychology, 
all those areas. And um, one of the things that's coming out of the, uh, uh, the cyber digital investigation work is the increasing focus in, uh, in the um, investigation organizations in law enforcement on things like human forensics, which isn't a technical specialism um, at all, but it, uh, it is very important to the work of the, uh, of, of the NCA and, and other law enforcement organizations. Lord Benson, profession must be controlled by a governing body. What, uh, what that means is you can't have a profession that's run by a committee. You have to have one, uh, one governing body. But because of the special cir circumstances in cyber security, the argument is that that, uh, that governing body has got to work with all the other players if we are going to achieve a valid profession of professions. Adequate standards of training and professional competence as a condition of entry, yes, but also continuing professional development. If you're going to be a professional in any organization, you have to maintain continuing professional development and ethical rules and professional standards need to be enforced uh, with disciplinary action for non-compliance. The thing with, uh, with cyber security is that there are all sorts of um, practitioners out there who have access to all sorts of privileged information, very sensitive information about customers. Ethics and professional standards are very important. And I'm old enough to remember, most of you aren't, but I'm old enough to remember in, uh, uh, in the US, in the late 80s and early 90s, there was a trend amongst uh, computer security companies in the States uh, to employ reformed hackers, people who had been prosecuted for hacking, because they would be good employees, they would know where the bodies were buried. I'm afraid that decision came back to bite a number of companies who employed those people. So that's what we, that's what we need. Where are we? I've already mentioned the, uh, the application to the Privy Council. Um, I've mentioned we're already working, or those bodies are already working together. There, uh, there has been uh, a series of meetings set up by DCMS, the Department of Culture, Media and Sport, uh, who for some strange reason are the lead department within government for cyber security. But they've already set up a series of meetings and, uh, and, uh, with those bodies. I've mentioned the work on a cyber security body of knowledge. Um, the two strands, uh, NCSC, ISP and others, who are working on the, uh, uh, the big cyber security body of knowledge, the complete work, if you like, and the ISP who have produced a, uh, an introductory version of, uh, uh, through our knowledge framework. For those of you who are interested, uh, the Knowledge Framework uh, version 1 is available. It's on the, IC, uh, on the ISP website, um, but it is currently only available to members. Uh, if you're not a member, please contact the, uh, the ISP and uh, I'm sure they will release you a copy. Uh, NCSE is accredited in a number of degree, degree programs in cyber security. I've mentioned that. Uh, I've mentioned the tech partnership work on um, uh, cyber security apprenticeships and degree apprenticeships. And one of the things the ISP is uh, working with the tech partnership on um, and other organizations is recognizing people who have successfully completed an apprenticeship or a de degree apprenticeship for, uh, for membership 
professional membership of the IASP. We haven't done it for degrees because uh, the requirement is that you, uh, it is not just a knowledge and understanding, you need to have had practical experience in applying that knowledge and understanding. Uh, so, uh, uh, so we haven't extended it to degrees, but because apprenticeships and degree apprenticeships include a lot of workplace uh, activity, uh, we are working with uh, the, uh, the Tech Partnership and City and Guilds to, to be honest, to, uh, to recognise successful people who successfully complete pr apprenticeships as members of the ISP. And, uh, and we are working with the College of Policing on the, uh, uh, the institute to set up an institute of cyber digital investigation professionals. Um, the pilot is currently in, in place. Uh, there is a website which was on an earlier side, slide. If you're interested in that, if you're working in law enforcement and you're interested in that, by all means go to the website and look it up. But please don't try to apply because uh, the, uh, we're, we're still in the pilot stage. It will not be open for business until late, uh, late, late 2018. And that's a quick overview. That's about it from me. 